Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Markets on Tuesday, the 21st of July. A couple of things that we've been discussing as an investment team here at True Potential this morning, and the first of which is just building on the discussions that we've had over previous days, and indeed going back to May when the, the EU recovery fund was first put forward by Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron. Now, what do we what do we know today? Well, we know that an agreement, a framework agreement, has been reached. Um, it does include compromise, and that compromise is, I suppose, twofold. One, the magnitude of grants that are being made is smaller than that which was initially envisaged. So the grants will be 390 billion. I think previously we discussed 500 billion. So a trade-off there, but the overall recovery fund remains 750 billion euros. The other trade-off that's noticeable in the agreement is that the Frugal Four of Sweden, Austria, the Netherlands and Denmark have been able to negotiate um, EU budget rebates, which will come through over the, the coming year. Something that I suppose, ironically, um, the, the UK negotiated originally as part of their uh, joining the EU. So something that the UK contributed benefiting uh, the, the Frugal Four at this point in time. But it's, I think, something is important to mention that maybe if we go back a number of months ago, it probably would have seemed unlikely that the EU would have been able to come to such an agreement. They have. It now needs to be ratified and implemented, and that, I am sure, will prove challenging at times. But what it does show is that at the EU level now, we've got a a comprehensive plan for dealing with the recovery post COVID-19, but more importantly, the opportunity for the EU to issue debt centrally, as opposed to at the individual country levels as well. This was something that was evident yesterday and we saw spreads for the EU periphery countries and those more impacted by the COVID-19 in terms of what it did to their borrowing costs, spreads relative to Germany, came in so we saw Italian spreads further narrow and that is really the, the benefit of, of this program. It enables cheaper debt financing to be raised centrally but also the financing for the individual countries with they issue to be at a lower rate as well. Other things to mention in asset markets yesterday, we saw continued news flow around vaccine development, particularly the Oxford AstraZeneca study which all, also showed positive efficacy a bit like the, the the details that we got last week as well so continued progress in the medical advances that are needed to help um, economies recover but also then to deal with the the ongoing challenge that COVID-19 is presenting I think then if we just look at equity markets yesterday a better day um, across the piece with US markets up a percent the Nasdaq up two and a half percent another all-time high for that, that index being achieved yesterday and then the S&P 500 moving into positive territory for, for the year. So positive performance through 2020, despite everything that we know that's going on in the background. We also continue to get earnings results coming through. One of the things we've touched on in the past is regulation and how that has impacted the ability of banks to pay dividends and to buy back shares. We've heard from UBS this morning and they suggest that they may be able to start repurchasing shares in the fourth quarter of this year. So again, business is starting to recover, starting to move forward with, with plans and indicating to, to shareholders how they will evolve over the coming months. We'll also hear from Microsoft this evening, which will be important. And um, that's a, a holding that we do have in our portfolios and something that we will be watching to see how the market reacts to the results that are delivered for the quarter, but obviously how the company talk about their future expectations. That's it for today. Please join me again tomorrow. Many thanks.